Hey guys, I'm Tinker. Welcome to part 15 of Tinker Chases. Let's get started. Chapter 29, The Perfect Storm. It was getting dark now. The sun outside was in, to its intensify. The four boys started and Stared in the melting terror and at the dusty ancient comic book and kept with joy hands. Their mouths hung open in shock, but they were too afraid to move. Finally, Finger's time began practically scratching his sweat soaked armpits. Doozy boy, we're a dead man. It's over. Game over, man. Uh, Bug began to cry. My pants are running, man. He said, I think I got the cars. Look, look, look. Me too. So, Luggy, Luggy screamed as he, as tears poured on his face. Kipper looked into his quivering arms of his three terrifying friends. His armpits were glowing as well, but he was too kind to end. Eh. Suddenly, a de defying blast of thunder shock shook the building. The light bulbs in the school flickered twice. And the bullies held each other and sobbed uncontrollably. Inside the restroom, George and Hill could hear their arch enemies shrieking out in the hallway, and the two friends tried as hard as they could to keep from laughing. They really knew they started being real. They never knew this time. Hill picked up his walkie talkie, pressed the transmit button. The toy walkie talkie on top of the locker. Locker on top of the lockers clicked with a crackle st of stag. I am the haunted pants of Wedgie McGee, whispered Hale from the tiny speaker. Hey, Crackhead, did, did. Did did you guys hear that? I'm coming for you. No, it's a, no, 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 no. Scooby Lucky, who was down laying around in small circles, punching his head with fists for some strange reason. Then he exploded again, and the hallways rumbled with thunder. The four bullies had now become completely unhinged. The bug dropped to the floor and curled up into a shivering ball, crying out to cry out for his mother to come and save him. Look, look, leave, look, look, leave us alone! He was going to swing his hands just in the air. We're sorry. Mr. Crook was in the middle of, the t of a teacher's meeting all the way on the, of the, the other end of the building. They went when he heard scr the scream, scream. It sounds like it sounds like Kipper is freaking out again. He growled. So he his face on the on the, um uh, he he got his face on the on the table and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. He got out from the meeting and stomped out of the room. Kipper and his friends heard the pounding sounds of stomping feet coming from the other side of the school building. Boom, 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 boom. The stomping got louder and louder, louder and louder, and closer and closer. Let's hide in the bathroom, screamed Lucky through his tears. Immediately, the four friend friends screamed, scrambled for the bathroom door. <laughs> Inside the bathroom, George Hill was still getting ready for their final party. George pulled the tall part of his pants over his head. The two kindergartners didn't know that going to be ambushed. I can't see, said George. Here, said, let me. Let me. 
So the rest of the crashed over my turn five was chilling his arm. He looked at Hill, all he got the giant pair of pants in front of him. Lightning pierced the of the he has to darken the clouds and everyone froze. The stalling footsteps came closer and closer. Boom 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 boom. What, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you doing with those pants, kid? Kraku. Hill couldn't think of a thing to say. It was supposed to happen like this. They weren't ready. For a split second, Hill saw his entire life flash before his eyes. He and George were going to get caught. The eyes were about to end. The footsteps and all got loud. Even that. Boom, 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 boom. And they're four points out. George knew they were in big and they were in trouble. He couldn't see, but he grasped the stumps anyway. It took a nine while we stepped for the the bull board. The bull, the bullies beheld what appeared to be a pair of pants walking around in the cells. Cells. They grasped each other and shrieked in ear splitting, splitting horror. Get away from those pants, kid! Cried Bug. Get away from those pants! Then, and <clears throat> then, as if an angle had, an angle had whispered it into his ear. He, an angel had whispered it into his ear. Hell thought of the perfect thing to say. What pants? He asked. <laughs> Boom, silly they time seemed to stand still. Boom, the four boys stepped back in horror. Boom, their eyes grew impossibly wide. Boom, they opened their mouths to scream. Boom, without a sound came out. Boom, George could that step on the boys. Boom, as they clawed out the wall behind them. Boom, boom, the lightning flashed again. And everything went dark. The terrible storm had knocked out a power line nearby. And the school was now completely black. Everyone his crew scrambled over each other, desperately trying to make their way through the restroom door. Mr. Crump was, was to be their next obstacle. He had finally reached the lockers when the lights went out. His elephant, 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 elephant footsteps had stepped Start to pull, and he stood in the darkness, ringing heavily and swaying about, about, about him. I found him. When the when the floor is squealing, they're listed. Dear legs finally tumbled out of the rest the restroom and bolted down the dark hallway. They said that's trying to nobody would be able to blame the the bullies for what they did next in their profoundly pet in the, their profoundly petrified perceptions. They must have believed that Mr. Crook was some kind of giant giant wet fleshy monster. Fleshy monster. And they treated him as such screeching and wailing in the darkness is they darkness they, they kicked and clawed the long white bubbles creature with all the strength they had. The floor is stressed out, the liquid, the liquid, then trembled down the stairs and shoved their way to the back of the school, back of the school, back of the school. As they ran across the football field toward their homes, something uh, kept, about Kevin, Kevin and his friends, and his friends changed forever. They will never again be the same despicable boys they once were. Three, the one of the the wonderful, happy, and friendly delightful ending. <laughs> one Monday morning was a very stressful time for Don Shumai. He had not been able to scrape a trunk to the old kipper, so he was trying to sneak into the school and go through the back door without being his kipper saw. Hey, hey, kid, yo, kipper, boy, up! I got something for you. Don 
Hermione pulled at the door, but it was locked. He kept pulling and pulling anyway as Kevin approached. I got Hermione for you, said Kevin. He reached his pocket and hey, Dolly, a crinkled five dollar bill. Dolly stopped pulling at the door and looked, looked, at, looked, looked at the money. He kept saying, Is this is a trick that I asked. Don't ask, don't ask. No, no, said Kevin. I'm really, I'm really sorry I took money from you, kid. I'm gonna pay you back every dollar as soon as I can, okay? Um, okay, said Dolly. He took the five dollar bill from Kevin's hand and rushed to the front door of the school. Um, to the front door of the school. His, his money had turned out a lot different than he had expected. Expected. The rest of the kindergarten, all, all around the school, the other kindergartners were having similar experiences. Finkus now was not only passing out, passing out money, money, he was also offering to carry every kindergartner's book bag to class. Bug was handing out cash and Cash, cash, and, and and free bubble gum, and Loogie was distributing, as distributing dollars and playing with the kindergarten, giving as many wages as they wanted. Kipper and his three friends eventually paid back all the money and sold it, and they never bought another present as long as they lived. Miss George Hill is saying that their enemies had truly been reformed. They called out the eventual rap of Witching McGee, the terrifying curse had finally been lifted, everyone was happy, and all was well with the world. With the world. I'd like to tell you that this is the end of our, of our story. I really would. But I can't because this wonderful, happy, and probably delightful thing is what was supposed to happen, not what actually did happen. <laughs> Remember back in chapter 8 when Tippy Tinkle Trousers was, was finally catching up pants? Kevin's <coughs> hands and he, <coughs> and he accidentally froze his giant roller legs to the school's football field. Well, if you all recall, Tippy got out of his jam and he's having himself back in the time five years earlier. Now, see if you can guess which night cured exactly five years earlier. If you guessed the night of the tra- terrible thunderstorm that forever changed the lives of Kevin and his buddies, you'd be correct. <coughs> There's Tippy. Unfortunately, by some wild and tragic coincidence, Tippy sent himself back. Tippy sent sent himself and his gigantic rubber bands back into the time. Time to the very moment when Kipper and his friends were running across the football field toward their homes, ignoring the cautious wit wisdom of the banana cream pie paradox. Tippy's reckless, reckless journey back through time. Would end up making one small, seemingly insignificant, significant change, and this one teeny tiny, itty bitty change will eventually destroy all hopes for the future of our civilization. As much as I hate to do it, let's go back to the darkened hallway of, of a fateful starry night and find out what really happened. The board is stressed to like the lit plants. Then tremble, 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 tumble down, down the stairs and shove their way from the back of the door of the school at, of the, of the school, of the school as they ran across the football field toward their friend, their homes. Something about Kevin and Chris would change forever. They will never again be the same as a couple of boys they once were. Alright guys, I'm going to cut and do a part 16. See you later for part 16. Bye.